Hey everyone, welcome back and Happy New Year. In this video, we're going to be looking at the solution that I've employed to be able to quickly swap out any wiring between the tool head and the ramps board on my Hypercube 3D printer. Nothing too fancy, of course. The goal of this task is to quickly be able to uh, disconnect and then reconnect all the wires between the hot end and the ramps board. And here I'm using the six pin MPX connector. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. Upload your PCB Gerber files, select your options, and receive an instant quote. Turn your next PCB project into reality at crazy low prices. This modification is only useful to you if you plan on replacing your entire uh, hot end assembly with some other device, such as a laser module. However, if you never plan on removing your hot end, then something like this is probably not required and just adds extra complexity to your 3D printer setup. When choosing a connector for a task such as this, there's a few characteristics worth checking. The first and foremost is, are there enough individual pin connections for all the features that we need uh, connected and disconnected from the hot end. In this case, yes, six is the absolute uh, minimum number of connections that we need to, to make this happen. And we'll go over that now. So we have six connections, two of which will be for direct connection to plus and minus, so plus 12 volts and ground. So that's going to be used for the uh, hot end cooling fan. Next we have the actual part cooling fan. This only has two connections as well. However, we want this to be controlled by the uh, MOSFET on the ramps board. So with the ramps board, the plus is common and the minus is actually pulsed through the MOSFET. So we want to connect the plus side of the fan in parallel with the plus side of this device down here and only have the negative wire going to, an, to a separate pin so it can be pulsed. Next up we have the inductive probe. There are three individual wires in this probe, plus, minus, and the sense wire. The plus and minus can be, again, paralleled, paralleled up with the uh, hot end cooling fan down here, but the sense wire needs its own wire. So that'll use the fourth pin. So we're using four out of the six pins so far, with only two remaining. Next up we have the heater cartridge itself. So this is the highest current part that will be passing through this particular connector. Again, this, this passes through one of the MOSFETs on the ramps board. The positive is all in parallel and the negative gets pulsed by the MOSFET. So again, we can parallel the positive wire with the other positive components and only have the uh, other leg going to the negative uh, of the ramps. So that's the fifth connection out of six. And finally, we have the uh, thermistor, which is also inside the heater block here, and again the ground this time is, is is common, and it's only the other leg which needs an individual connection. So we can wire up one of the thermistor leads to the to the negative, and the other thermistor lead uses the final and sixth pin on our connector. So six pins is just enough to make this work. That's great. So the next thing we need to ascertain is does this connector have enough uh, current capacity rating to be able to handle all of the devices. The number one uh, current drawing device on the hot end is the actual heater cartridge itself. The heater cartridge is a 40 watt device and at 12 volts it's approximately uh, three, three and a half amps. Now with this connector I can't actually find a data sheet online regarding what the current capacity of this is, but various other websites which sell this rate this as a 35 amp capable connector and they get that rating by combining three of the pins for your positive and the three three of, your, of the other pins for the negative to get you that combined 30, 35 amp current rating. So if we just divide that by three, because we're only going to use individual pins here, we're not going to parallel three up, then we can safely assume that we're going to get about 10 amps out of this, uh, out of each pin, which is well more than enough what we, than what we need for the actual uh, hot end, in this case the heater cartridge, which is the number one device which consumes about three to three and a half amps. 
Another important aspect when choosing a connector is to ensure that it has a gold plating on the actual pin contacts themselves, on both sides, the, the plug and the socket. That's to ensure that we're going to get the lowest resistance connection whenever we mate these two together. That also means that a gold plating is generally not going to corrode over time. And being a low resistance connection, the connector isn't actually going to add any resistance to the electrical path, so the connector won't actually get warm itself, or alter the temperature reading from the thermistor. This connector is almost perfect, but it does have its flaws, and the number one flaw is the actual mold of the connector itself. There's virtually nowhere to grab onto the socket side of this connector to pull it away from the plug. When these two are mated together, they are a, a solid fit. This shouldn't come away by itself in just the, the normal use of the printer. However, when it comes time to actually disconnect it to put on a different tool head on your, on your printer, without having something to hold on to besides the wires coming out of the connector itself, it's actually quite hard to pull these apart. So I've designed a holder to hold the socket side of the connector. This is going to need to be glued in, unfortunately, as again, there's nowhere to hook into this MPX connector. And on the plug side, I've just created a cover which slides over the entire assembly, just so when it's together, it looks like it's one piece. However, I'll probably omit this side here. I'll probably just cut this away. As the actual connector, you can grab onto the, the outside of the plug. That's what's exposed. So if this part here was only fixed inside uh, that bit of plastic there, I've got some two-part epoxy. Uh, that should then make that a rock solid connection. And that will allow me to easily uh, connect and disconnect from the plug and socket. As the x-axis end stop is not included as part of the tool head, it's actually a part of the carriage. The three wires to the end stop do not go through the connector. The three wires are directly connected to the ramps board. Looking at the cable loom coming from the X carriage, we can see the cables coming out of that now. So here we have the servo extension lead. This is what I'm using for the uh, X carriage end stop. So that's never going to change. But here are our six individual uh, wires going to the MPX connector. Now I've chosen to choose six individual wires here rather than a multi-conductor cable just just like this here which you could use a multi-conductor cable just to make your your wiring a little neater uh, just to ensure that the thickness of the conductor is big enough for the amount of current that that you're going to draw so if you're just using a standard hot end the the number one item which consumes the most current is the heater cartridge so you'd want at least 20 gauge cable for that uh, otherwise here I'm using 18 gauge it's probably a little bit too big for this application as I don't think I'll be using any more than the 3 amps uh, out of these individual conductors but because it's a 10 amp connector I'm thinking I might use more than 3 amps so this is more of just a future proofing for me than actually a necessity when choosing the cable which goes from the X carriage into the ramps board, ensure you're using a stranded conductor. So a stranded conductor or a stranded cable is made of these many thin wires inside the actual cable or plastic sheath itself, as opposed to one big fat solid conductor. A solid conductor uh, won't bend as easily as a stranded conductor and will eventually uh, fray or snap over time, especially as these cables are constantly moving. Whereas a stranded conductor is designed to be uh, flexed and bent and twisted as much as we need in our 3D printer. For simplicity's sake, before I show you where everything plugs into, I've just unplugged everything else from my ramps board except the six connections coming from the X carriage and that MPX6 connector. The first thing I'll show you is with my multimeter here on continuity. I'll just show you that the positives on the screw terminals on the ramps board are actually common together. So I'll zoom in here. I'll plug the meter on the fan output positive and on the heater cartridge positive screw terminal and there's a straight through connection. They then go through this uh, resettable fuse up here and then to the input of the ramps down here. You'll see that the negatives are not connected at all. So for my first wire I'm plugging in the red cable which will be my 12 volts 
into one of the 12 volt outputs coming from these screw terminals. At first, I was originally gonna parallel the plus and minus into the screw terminal from the ramps here, but then I thought that's gonna bypass the onboard protection, so it's better to grab the plus 12 volts from one of the screw terminals. For the ground connection, unfortunately there's no ground screw terminal on the ramps board. Originally I simply stripped enough of this ground cable away and had it paralleled up on the power connector coming into the ramps board. That worked, however whenever the fan or the heater cartridge were engaged, being pulse width modulated, it would cause noise on the ground connection over here, being where the power's coming in and that would, that would cause just enough of a voltage differential that the thermistor, the temperature reading via the ADC, was being manipulated, it was being changed, and the temperature reading was jumping up and down by plus or minus 10 degrees. So to be able to remedy that, I had to choose my ground connection from a different location. And I simply chose one of the servo ground connections on the pin header up here, just as a test. I just had these two wires screwed together and that did the trick. Uh, the thermistor was no longer jumping up and down. It was a clean uh, ADC reading from the at mega module. So what I'll do here, because the this particular uh, pin header doesn't have the same current carrying capacity as the MPX connector, I'm going to split this wire in two, being a stranded wire, it's quite easy, and have that going into two of these pin headers, and then they'll both plug in right next to each other to get uh, a higher current capacity ground connection. For the nozzle cooling fan, this is connected to D9 on the ramps board, this is via this white wire, you can see I've got that going into the negative screw terminal, so just ensure that you connect this to the negative of the fan on the X carriage. And for the heater cartridge, this is D10 plugging into the negative screw terminal. The heater cartridge is not polarity conscious, so you can just choose either of the legs to uh, power that up. And lastly, we have the two sense wires. This first one over here is from the thermistor, and this one over here is from the inductive probe. That's our Z-axis. For this, I've just used some figure eight cable, and I've split that figure eight cable into the single DuPont connections. For the individual thermistor cable, we already have one side of the thermistor already going to ground. That's as it's connected on the MPX connector. So this is the other leg of the thermistor. Ensure that that goes into the second last port of T0. Just like, just like that. And same with the Z axis. So this is coming from our inductive probe. Uh, we only need the sense wire here, so that's this S column all the way across. So we'll plug that into Z min. So that's X, Y, Z min. Whenever I use projects that require pin header connections, attaching 0.1 inch female DuPont to the end of bare wires is actually quite simple. And I use this for any project that requires pin header attachment. For this particular use case, we want two uh, pin headers on this one individual cable. So here I've stripped about one centimeter uh, off this cable and I've evenly split the strands uh, to one side each. So we have half here and half here. With these 0.1 inch uh, female DuPonts, they come in reams of like 100 like this and you just simply uh, snap off uh, a particular uh, pin header. And they come with two flaps that we can crimp down around the cable. Now normally the large flaps at the rear of the DuPont is used to support the cable. So generally you'd have the sheath also surrounded by that. But here we're not gonna do that. We're going to have just the bare wire entering. And the bare wire will be crimped from both the, the rear flaps and also the center flaps. And I don't actually have a proper DuPont tool. I just use my long nose pliers. If you have a spare dual pin header connector, then you can go ahead and just plug in the crimps you've just crimped straight into it. However, I'm gonna reuse this particular uh, dual plastic housing from this piece of figure eight cable as I'm not using it at the moment. 
To pull the pin headers out of existing cases like this is quite easy. Uh, just have the metal part exposed on the connector, the other, the other side is just uh, all plastic. And just use something sharp. Here I'm using just the tip of a hobby, hobby blade knife. And you'll see I'll push this in to underneath one of these flaps. And these flaps just stop the pin header from, from pulling back out. They're like a little lock. So you can see if I tilt that up, I'll get under, under there again. You can lift up that little flap. And then when that's lifted up, you can then simply pull out the pin header. Now we're ready to push in our crimped cable into this spare connector. We just need to push in the crimped side up to where the windows are on that side of the connector. We'll put both in at the same time here, seeing as if I put one in, I might not be able to get the other one in. Push in. And that's it. Locked in place. Just to add a bit of strength to this connection, because we don't have the plastic sheath crimped within this connector here, we only have the stranded uh, wires within. I'm just going to add a bit of heat shrink to the to the rear side of this, just to add a bit of extra protection and also uh, cover up any exposed earth cable that is coming out of that connector. So I'll only need about maybe five millimeters of heat shrink, say about that much. Pass it over the top of the connector. And how good is it to be able to totally remove the entire hot end assembly from the 3D printer? Surely it makes maintenance, upgrades, or even the initial installation so much easier, not having to be tethered to the printer. You can take this away, work on it on a different desk in a different room. So good. And of course, the whole reason for making our tool heads detachable is to put on different tool heads. So here is my 2.5 watt laser diode. You can see I have the same uh, MPX connector on here with exactly the same pinouts as what I'm using on my hot end assembly. However, there's only two wires on here that I need to worry about. This is just the two wire laser, it isn't the PWM version. So because it's only the two wire laser, I'm using the fan control. The same part or nozzle cooling fan on the ramps board for the hot end is also used for the laser. So just like the fan, the plus 12 volts is just going straight to the 12 volts and the negative lead from the laser is going to the fan control. So let me know your thoughts of using the MPX6 connector as the detachable connector for our different tool heads. Maybe you're using a different connector or maybe this particular scenario won't work for you because six pins is just not enough, i.e. you're using a direct drive extruder or even a BL-Touch bed probe.